Now it's about time to open a new chapter about the exciting world of uh, 3D printing, isn't it? So it was about, I think, 18 months ago that the weekly magazine, The Economist, shot a cover story with this headline, please print me a Stradivarius. And so there was a violin on the cover, and so we brought the violin in Rome, and we, via Twitter, we found a violin player, and that's what's happened. So, the player is uh, Sebastiano Frattini, that I'm thanking him again. And the violin, actually, the 3D printed violin, it sounds pretty well. Not bad, actually. And uh, this is just to tell you that we are start talking about 3D, the 3D printer world. We make it with a, with a leader of a community, not just a maker, but a printer, as he says in the t-shirt, from Prague. The mysterious jo Joseph Prusa, mysterious because I haven't seen his presentation yet. He just arrived. He has missed the flight. Welcome. Ciao, Joseph. Let's go. Okay. Hi. First, I must say I'm really grateful that I can be here. It's wonderful. Thank you, all of you who make this happen, because this is my fourth Maker Fair. But it's really convenient that I don't have to fly to the US to meet all my favorite makers, right? So I think they deserve another small applause. Come on. Yeah. So uh, he said I'm mysterious. I'm not that mysterious. I'm one of the core developers of wonderful project, which is called RepRap. It stands for Replicating Rapid Prototyper. And it's basically a 3D printer which can print itself. Uh, so I would like to use this moment, if my clicker would be, oh, OK, to ask you a few questions, because it's really hard to get feedback from the community for us. So there are three simple questions, and I want you to raise your hand if you, if you know. So who knows 3D printing? I guess everybody. I mean, and for real, I mean, not like it prints guns, but for real, OK. And who knows RepRap or heard of it? Well, that's still really good. And who has one? OK, one, two, three, four. OK, cool. Uh, so I guess we should start a bit with the history, because there's still a lot of people who doesn't know about RepRap. So it was a warm summer evening at the University of Bath. In, in the UK, it was the year 2006, and Dr. Adrian Boyer and his grad students started to work on RepRap project. It's really important because uh, RepRap project started all the uh, 3D printing bus, which you can see now. Most of the, uh, the home or desktop 3D printers you can see now are derived more or less from RepRap. So I would like to call the year 2006 year of 3D printing. Unfortunately, United Nations took, well, year 2006 for something else. So 2006 is a year of deserts and desertification. I mean, deserts, not deserts, it's sand. So for me, it's still a year of 3D printing. Uh, so let me show you one of the first wrap wraps. So uh, this one is called Darwin, uh, after famous biologist Charles Darwin. Uh, what is special and what you can see behind me is that it self-replicates. 
It was the first uh, 3D printer to self-replicate, and it was designed by Ed Sells at University of Bath. You are supposed to buy uh, the unprintable parts, as, as we call them vitamins, in the local, local hardware store, and, well, they can replicate. Unfortunately, these took a long time to, to print, and there's not too many of them, and was succeeded by better designs. But this printer still lives, or its DNA lives in um, many other printers. For example, this one uh, is father of uh, Bits from Bytes Repman, which now is uh, 3D Systems Cube 3 or something like that. So it was still a really important printer. Uh, it was succeeded by Mendel. Uh, nowadays, if you are looking for this one, it's usually called Cells because it was designed by Cells. There were many, 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 many other derivatives of, of this printer. Uh, there are many important things about this. It was much faster to replicate and allowed for great growth of the community. There are a couple thousands of those around. Also, I think it was the first widely used 3D printer using uh, Arduino-based electronics. So, hi, Massimo. And fun fact is that the electronics is, uh, this one on the picture is actually made by MakerBot before they invented 3D printing. Uh, but it was the last printer which was designed solely on University of Bath. Unfortunately, I think they closed the lab on the on the University of Bath because they didn't have enough funding. But uh, right now, most of the, well, all of the designs are actually made by community. So it's wonderful. Most uh, of the development is done on IRC. Do you still guys use IRC? Who knows IRC? Cool, cool. I actually learned English on IRC, so it's my excuse if I do some inappropriate jokes or something like that. It's thanks to IRC. So uh, I invite you to visit us as, uh, at RepRap on Freenode. And, well, there's a design named after me. I'm for, well, community called it after me. I, I was still calling it Mendel. So I'm not aspiring to be a famous biologist or anything like that. Uh, but why I'm talking about this, it's, it's not about me, but it's more about the story because the open hardware allowed me to be who I am today. I mean, before I was a boring student on the University of Economics in Prague. Now I'm proud dropout and I travel the world and people everywhere are building my designs. Uh, there are thousands of derivatives. Uh, I really suggest you to visit this web page at reprap.org, uh, reprap family tree, so you can see how diverse the community can be and how many uh, designs you can create. If, if you look at my design, it's just over, over there, and there are, on this two-year-old version, still tens and tens of uh, modifications and other designs. So it's really wonderful. It's as big that we can convince, uh, for example, GitHub, which is <laughs> page for sharing source code, to implement uh, features for us. Because we develop most of our printers on GitHub, even though you know, nobody would expect GitHub to be platform for developing 3D printers. But now you can view the STL files right away, and you can do uh, diffs of different commits. It's really wonderful how we are changing the, with the community the, uh, the, the internet. Oh, OK. So now, something interesting for uh, you who already you wrap up, we have some really cool new designs. Uh, this one is called Morgan. It won the Gata Prize. And what I think is really cool about this one is the fact that all the mechanical parts can be uh, hidden away. So it will be a really wonderful food safe printer so you can print safe toys and stuff like that. Uh, another one is Wrap Simpson done by Nicholas Subert. 
And this one is almost like 90% printable because, well, a lot, of print, uh, a lot of people don't like the fact that we still use threaded rods and it's a valid, uh, valid question why we don't have printed ones, but we do. Unfortunately, it takes uh, around 60 hours to print this one, but if you, are, if you have a lot of time uh, or you are in the middle of uh, Australia and you don't have a hardware shop nearby, but you have a ton of filament, you can build another printer almost for free. Uh, so, a little bit more about community. Uh, RepRap is completely decentralized. There's, there are some core developers, which I'm one of them, and there's everyone else. But, uh, I mean, I'm by no means important because unfortunately, the core developers are for the boring stuff. Like, we check the forums and delete spam. We do the decisions of what will be on the website. All the boring stuff, and it takes a lot of time. And everybody else, or everyone else, has the time to do the fun stuff. So, yeah. And also in our community, everything is, uh, street credit is everything. What make, uh, it doesn't matter if you are elected a core developer, if you, do, if you have design which nobody uses, it does, you, don't, you don't mean anything. That's my point. So, uh, pros and cons of RepRap community. It's really uncontrollable. It's pro and con. Uh, everything is basically done by evolutionary principles. Uh, nobody picks the new designs uh, which people will be using. If the design is popular, print, uh, people are improving on it and sharing it, and more people use it, but nobody can say, so from now on, we will be using not Prusa, but Darwin again. No. Uh, the pros are that we are really, really, really fast. If something new come, comes, we can adapt all the designs in a few days and have them online, and people on the other side of the planet will be already printing the new versions. We are lean, we don't, have, uh, we don't have too many positions which do something which isn't really needed. Uh, we are adaptive, as I told, and innovative. Basically, most of the innovation in 3D printing is done by some way or another in, in the RepRap community. Unfortunately, uh, as the community which isn't uh, run by anyone, Nobody wants to do the boring stuff, which for us developers is marketing. And it really hurts the community because, well, how often do you hear about RepRap from media? Well, unfortunately, not, not enough. So that's, that's basically it. I really want to thank you for uh, listening and for, my, for answering my questions. And I have one last thing. Please don't overhype the 3D printing because right now uh, in the media there's a lot of I'm I'm sorry there's a lot of bullshit and <laughs> it it makes people anticipate a lot more than it actually is and then they are bummed so 3D printing is cool keep it that way but don't overhype it it can hurt us thank you thank you Joseph you will see with the next speaker probably we are going to overhype it a little bit but. There is a story that uh, I discovered on the web uh, in a blog post about your tattoo. Let's take a look. What is tattoo about? Well, uh, when I was starting my company, uh, I wanted to uh, have all my, uh, how do, what's the word, damn. Uh, basically, this is the logo of open hardware as it would be printed with a 3D printer. And it's actually really real, and you are, I know that you are going to ask about it, but I wanted something to remind me my principles uh, after I started my company, so I get, got this tattoo. And it is somehow related to Slicer? And to yes, actually it is really real. The, the infill pattern is actually uh, generated by software which one of my best friends is writing, and there's... He's is there, over there. Alessandro Ronellucci from Rome, actually. <laughs> Come here for a minute, Alessandro. Thank you. So 
tell us a few words about Slicer. I, I think almost everybody already knows the Slicer, but I mean, for the few that already I, don't know yet. Slicer is the software part for RepRap printing, and I started to de develop it because I, I, have, I had a need for, for cheap 3D printing. But I want to say one thing. If we have lots of low-cost 3D printers nowadays, and you can see lots here in the, at the Maker Faire, it's, because, it's only because we have open source 3D printers. Because hundreds of people... <laughs> yeah. It, it's just because of this. Because hundreds of people from all over the world uh, have been collaborating for as, as, uh, the common goal. So uh, open source is a way to turn competition into collaboration. Okay, as a Roman, I'm so proud of him. Well, thank you, Alessandro. Thank you. So, he, he is really modest, but actually everybody is using his software, so. <laughs> it's even better. Okay, thank you, Joseph. Bye.